Hello there, everybody. Professor Tomney here with another Chem Complete episode. And in today's episode, we're going to get ready to wrap up aldehydes and ketones with a look at the last major reaction that we need to study for the aldehyde and ketone lecture series, and that is the Wittig reaction. So that W is pronounced with a V, the Wittig reaction. And we are going to take a look at this reaction in detail on the channel today. So that's coming up right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And as always, thank you for using Chem Complete as your learning series for any organic chemistry related content. So the way that the Wittig reaction works is it's really in two parts. The first part is prepping or getting ready for the Wittig reaction. And that is the creation of what is known as an illid. So again, some weird terminology here, the Wittig with a V and then illid with that Y is pronounced ill, like if you were to be sick, and then id. Illid is the name of that compound. Okay, so what is an illid? An illid is going to be the composure of triphenylphosphine, which is three phenyl groups, which we're abbreviating with a pH here. So don't forget that would, those would each be a benzene ring. Okay, and then that is attached to a carbanion. So we could do just a CH here and then some other sort of R group. So once you have this, this portionality here would be negative and the phosphorus would be positive and that makes your illid reagent and this carbanion is going to act as a nucleophile in the actual Wittig reaction. So in order to form illids, we need access to triphenylphosphine as a starting reagent. So we're going to use triphenylphosphine and then that triphenylphosphine, the phosphorus is going to have a lone pair on it and that lone pair can act as a nucleophile to go in and attack some sort of a hydrocarbon group. So we want to keep this simplistic and the formation of illids primarily uses SN2 mechanics. So we want a relatively unhindered alkyl halide. So we can go ahead and we can use, in order to create a similar example, we can use ethyl bromide here. And in the mechanism of an SN2, the leaving group would leave. And as it is leaving, the phosphorus would come in and would attack that carbon where the leaving group was leaving from. Right? So as a result, what we would end up with is this complex where you would have the triphenylphosphine portionality that has now formed a new covalent bond with this CH group, right? So we would have the CH2 and we would have a CH3 and then that phosphorus because it was neutral would now be positively charged. So the additional step in order to actually get the anion up here, because we're not at that point quite yet, is that we need to use a reagent known as butyl lithium. Okay, now butyl lithium is a butyl group that has had a hydrogen removed in order to make it a carbanion itself. It is an extremely potent base. It's actually pretty dangerous to work with in the lab because it is pyrophoric, which means that if you attempt to use it, um, and it gets exposed to air or moisture or anything like that. If you draw it up into a syringe and you kind of just spit it out of the syringe, it will actually catch fire in the air when you're doing that. Okay, so that will create the actual illid that we need. So we're going to have the PPH3, and then we would have the CH, and in this case it's not R anymore, it would be the CH3 group, and that would be the carbon ion that we would have right there. Okay, so what the butyl lithium did was as a base, this butyl group basically came and took a hydrogen and then the extra lone pair was deposited there. So there you go. Now we have a hold of one of the reagents we need in order to run the Wittig reaction. So then step two, obviously, is taking our illid and running it through the Wittig reaction itself. So the Wittig reaction is going to use an aldehyde or a ketone and then it is going to result in an alkene. So a carbon-carbon double bond. So let's just use a simple example. We can use acetone. Okay, and so here's a ketone. And if I expose this ketone to the Wittig reagent that we just made, 
which would be pH 3, P, and then CH, CH3. This is going to come in and act as the nucleophile, right? So the final result here, and then I'll go over the mechanism in a second as to how we got to this, okay, is going to be CH3, C, CH3. And then you would have a double bond here. So instead of the oxygen, you would have a double bond to this carbon, hydrogen, and then CH3. Okay, so if you might be a little confused as to where that's coming from, if we highlight this right here, here is the CHCH3 portionality. Here is a CHCH3 portionality. So that is what has been replacing the oxygen throughout this mechanism here. Hey, now, if we want to actually take a look at the mechanism and how this unfolds, well, the ILID here is going to send the lone pair from the carbon into the carbonyl group, as we would expect for a basic condition aldehyde ketone reaction. Okay, and then that is going to proceed forward. And so the first step that we would get is going to be a intermediate and that intermediate is going to have a bond to the ILID reagent. So we've got an O minus right here, and then we've got this C. Now this C is from the reagent itself. So I still have the triphenylphosphine here. Oops. Okay. And then I also have, what do I have here? An H and a methyl, right? So I would have a CH and a CH3. So if you take a look at this, this oxygen here would have lone pairs. It is going to very easily form a bond and coordinate itself with that phosphorus group. And so what we end up with is a specialized four-membered ring intermediate. And that intermediate is known as a beta eaten. Okay, so we've got the oxygen here that now has a bond to this phosphorus. We still have the triphenyl over here. Okay, and then you can see here, you've got this four-membered ring. So this readily kind of collapses in on itself as we move along towards the product. But this is your intermediate here. And again, this is known as a beta-ene intermediate in the Wittig reaction. And so from here, this bond can come in to form a set of pi bonds with the phosphorus and oxygen. And then you can get this set of electrons to come down and form the alkene that is needed here. And there you go. So now, again, let's highlight in a different color. Okay, so we'll use blue this time. Okay, if you look at the whole thing up here, well, here's the CH3, CH3C, right? And then here is the portionality that forms the double bond coming in. So that is your targeted product right there. That's your alkene. And then you would have the triphenylphosphine oxide as a side product uh, that's a result of this. Okay, so that's it. That covers the Wittig reaction, and that really ties together aldehydes and ketones pretty well. So if you are interested in guides uh, or additional support, head on over to chemcomplete.com. We've got lots of resources over there, including resources for aldehydes and ketones. The guides are very affordable. It's a great way to support the channel. You can always support us through the thanks button as well. And as always, learning with us, liking the videos, and subscribing is the best form of support as we continue to grow. So thank you so much for learning with me today, and I will see you guys in the next one.